He only said players are ready, not I'm ready. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Feature Match area here for round number 13 of coverage of GP Brussels. The format is standard, and on your screen, Javier Dominguez, the ninth-ranked player in the world, world's finalist last year on Grixis Midrange. It's had a quiet weekend. We'll see how it does in the hands of the Spanish superstar. Laurent Bailey, almost certainly mispronouncing both names there, my friends. I do apologize for that. But he's on the traditional red-black chain whirly. You're in the booth with me, Riley Knight, joining me, the Pro Tour champion and a good coverage colleague, friend of mine, Simon Gertsen. Simon, from the outset, Grixis Midrange, red-black chain whirly. How are you calling this matchup? I kind of like the Grixis Midrange list. Um, it's one of these things where you're going one step slower, and that's generally uh, that should generally favor you. We've also seen that the blue-black midrange and Grixis midrange decks generate so much card advantage, it's it's actually pretty insane. We haven't seen too much of the uh, the Grixis midrange list throughout the weekend, Simon. Uh, got a huge shot in the arm thanks to the addition of Nicol Bolas the Ravager. Mulligan uh, time for Laurent here. Six cards total on turn two. So not, uh, not an ideal start for him here as a Sorcerer's Spyglass, almost certainly naming Chandra there. Oh, I guess you could also name Scrap Heap's Grounder, but... You could, depending on your hand. Um, Chandra is, I think, the more reasonable card to take there. Karizev clipping in for three here. Lauren Bailey with an invisible Ragavan finds a third land, and now the Scrap Heap's Grounder comes into play. Uh, Sorcerer's Spyglass in the main deck of Dominguez here. What are your thoughts and feelings on, on that? I don't love it, but I, I can see um, playing one of those cards because it has really good uses and it's something that Blue Black is struggling with uh, generally, dealing with uh, certain artifacts mm. and planeswalkers. I think there just, uh, are just that many valid targets for a Pithing Needle type effect as we see the Glint Sleeve Siphoner trade off with a Scrappy Scrounger here. There are so many Pithing Needleable cards that are commonly played in Standard that, uh, yeah, it, it's a good call. Everything from Aether Flux Reservoir to Chandra Torch Defiances, which is what we see named here. But uh, even I, think fairy. I think it's only really viable because you're playing um, Champion of Wits. That allows you, mm. if, if you really don't want the Spyglass, allows you to trade it in for a new card. Dominguez plays the Champion to try to find a fourth land and finds not only a fourth, but also a fifth land. Looks like it might be hitting the bin. However, look at that. Two copies of Nicol Bolas, the Ravager in hand. We haven't seen a lot of ravaging being done this weekend, Simon, but that could be set to change here if Dominguez is going to have his way. But um, Dominguez actually had the fourth land, but I think it was a tapped land, right? Otherwise, I'm sure he would oh, have he slammed the, the bolus. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Oh, interesting actually, choice. No, I don't think he did, because, hang on. He definitely drew the fetid pools and the ether hub there. So he had the sulfur falls in hand and chose not to play. He chose not to play Nicol Bolas this turn. He so definitely had the Sulphur Falls in hand. Yeah, that's a bit surprising to me. I think the the four four would have been great on this board, especially with Chandra being shut down by the Spyglass. Sure, um, it's a free discard for for Laurent, but um, you get a four four that's dominating the battlefield. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. You're saying it's a free discard for Laurent in the sense that he isn't going to he's going to enjoy having to discard a card. It's well more than any other card. He's going to enjoy discarding a Chandra that's uh, not doing oh, anything. Oh, sure. So he's got, yeah, as in, as in, it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not as if, you know, he's playing as a reanimated deck where they actively want to discard cards, but he's going to be able to discard a card that. A, isn't dead, a dead card. A dead card, yeah. effectively. Now, Unless you draw an, a braid, and there are certainly some situations where you can re enable that Chandra, but, um, I mean, playing it here is, is a really bad turn. Yes, especially as Dominguez may look to uh, just slam Nikki B, the meanest girl in school into play here. Wouldn't be surprised to see him take this line. A very powerful one indeed. Four mana, and it's Ravager time. Here we come. Look at this. Big 4-4 four, four flyer. Discards an extra carry. <laughs> Seth Bailey with all the cards in the world to discard here to Nickel Bolas. Dominguez still quite a ways off from flipping the uh, Nickel Bolas to the Arisen Planeswalker side. But just as a 4-4 four, four flyer, dominating this battlefield rather effortlessly, Simon. Absolutely, and... Um Laurent, I don't know, he, he opted not to attack with this Grounder. He opted to play the Chandra. Um, 
now didn't have mana to get back the Scrap Heap Scrounger. Needs to top deck something against the 4-4. These last two turns have been really bad for him. Disastrous. I love this attack from Dominguez as well. He went after the, he went after the Chandra with the Champion of Wits, despite the fact that she's not doing anything. If Bailey ripped an Abrade, all of a sudden that Chandra could then take down the Nickel Bolas. That line has been removed from the equation with a, a great attack there from Dominguez. I really like that. Yep. Crossed out. And uh, before attacks, Dominguez says, well, 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 we, well, well, my friend. I'm going to fatal push your carry, Zev. Prevents let invisible Ragavan from making another appearance here. Let me untap that for you. And so now, Dominguez, sitting pretty behind his massive Elder Dragon here. The Elder Dragons, the marquee mythics, I would say, of M19, haven't had the constructed implications in standard, at least. I know that many fans of, of EDH have... Uh, already begun to slam and jam with many of the, the dragons, including, of course, Arcades. Very exciting card indeed. We're also seeing a fair bit of play in Brawl. It's great to see some uh, th more three-color options in the Brawl format. Yep, absolutely. Interesting choice by uh, Dominguez to keep Ugrath's Bloodfast in his hand um, a few turns ago mm. because he's playing against an, a very aggressive deck but still valuing the ability to draw some extra cards very highly, as we can see here. Dominguez forcing through three damage, a chump attack with one of the Scrap Heap Scroungers there. Dominguez now facing down a Heart of Kieran. Not a bad draw by Laurent. I still don't think Dominguez is too worried about it, however, because he can just trade with the Nicol Bolas and then, de then deploy the second one. But, uh, for example, you saw him here not drawing any cards, so he does respect the reach of yes. the of the red black chain roller deck. Yes, could have uh, could have snagged himself an extra card off the top there with his greed like Argyle's Bloodfast. How good would greed be in standard? Greed is four mana. Four mana, and then you uh, black black pay a life, draw a card. Pay one life. I think pay one life. Yeah, I'll check that. I think it would be worse than Argyle's Bloodfast. Very just likely, just just, just based on the mana. It's pay two life. Excuse me. Black, exactly. It's black pay two life. Draw so. A card. So then it's clearly worse. Yeah. You need to have this in play for so long to be mm. even more mana efficient than, than a blood fast. Yeah. Yeah, ultimately, th and the fact that this can come down on turn two in, in yeah. slower control matchups, dodge those counter spells early in the early game there. Better artwork on greed, though. Oh, I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because in one he's eating the money, and then in the other one he's spewing it up. Mm. So it's, uh, it's an homage. It's the circle of life. And we see Nicol Bolas trading off against the Heart of Kieran, just as we mentioned. Looks like Dominguez did discard the extra copy of uh, Nicol Bolas there. He's drawn a lot of ether hubs. So Dominguez just sitting behind these two champion of wits. Champions of wits? Mm -hmm. In any case, Scarab God coming down now. It's all haymakers all day for Dominguez. And we call this Grixis midrange, very much blue-black midrange, splashing red for... Nicol Bolas. There are blue-black mid-range decks without Nicol Bolas and there are blue-black mid-range decks with Nicol Bolas mm -hmm. that we call Grixis mid-range decks. I mean, okay, in fairness, there are a couple of other red cards. We've got things like a Braid. We've got... I think that's it, actually. Yeah, sometimes you have you find, like, a Harness Lightning in yeah. there. Yeah, Chandra's Defeat, um, actually. Some side... Well, that's in the sideboard, right? Yes, sure, in the sideboard. Yeah, but we don't, we don't usually consider sideboard cards um, for, for the pure exercise of naming mm. the deck. Mm. Bailey now, seeing if there's a way through this situation, Dominguez is going to be able to start reanimating his Nicol Bolas from the bin there. Uh, and if either of these champions die, he just gets to um, eternalize mm. them, which is also huge. He's in a great spot. He's got him coming and going at this stage. And again, this is something we've talked about. One of the shortcomings of the uh, the red-black chain world list Almost no reach. No lightning strikes, generally no shocks, nothing like that. And all of the uh, abrades and cut to ribbons and all that sort of stuff. I mean, ribbons are an uh, obvious exception, but cut doesn't go upstairs. You know, there's no way for Bailey to winnow away the life total of Dominguez with, without attacking. Mm -hmm. we, we have to be fair, though. Uh, Bailey was on a mulligan to five. Mm -hmm. He drew two of his legends. His Chandra was shut down b before it came down. So... Pretty pretty tough uh, matchup to begin with, and then definitely not the draws uh, to to win this game. 
Bailey with this cut to ribbons stuck in hand. And Dominguez sends both of his champions of wits to the bin. Doesn't want to expose the Scarab God to something like, well, again, a cut, a magma spray perhaps. Mm -hmm. And why would you, if you can just uh, safely start returning champion of wits? Uh, most likely both of them, actually. Yeah, look at this. Draw four, discard two. I think this is in the upkeep here, Simon. Yep. So he has found the untapped land he needs in order to reanimate another champion of wits here. And uh, I would say, I mean, you and I have a history of impeccable accuracy with early calls mm -hmm. of games, Simon. So I'm just about ready to put this one to bed. Yep. I and don't think we've ever this been time wrong. This time you might actually be right. Uh, okay. Well, I was going to say, you know, we win together, we lose together. You and I were a team. But you are happy to just chuck me under the bus here. But yes, no, anyway, you slice. It looks like Dominguez is very much in a commanding position here. Despite being at a lower life total than his opponent, he's got more cards, more resources, a better battlefield. The Scarab God is a mean, mean bus driver. Or is it a train conductor? I honestly don't think it matters what kind of vehicle the Scarab God is driving. That vehicle is going to uh, get him across the finish line very quickly. Yeah. It's... I think he's driving the pain train. He's driving the pain train, yes. And right now, it is toot toot all aboard and express uh, service. <laughs> Laurent is the only passenger. Yes, express service to Damage Town. Looks like the final stop will be game two here because Bailey is going to have a very hard time. Here's cut to ribbons, going to remove this champion of wits from the equation and unlock the ribbons as well. He does need 10 mana to make it lethal, but hey, stranger things have happened. Yeah, I mean, if, if that Scrap of Scoundrel would connect, Laurent would only be one mana away from, from lethal. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Dominguez does have a Vraska's Contempt in hand. Looks like that's going to be the play here. Oh, no. Okay. Just going to instead... Yeah, I like this one. Reanimate Nicol Bolas. Discard the Abrade. Block your Scrap Heap Scrounger. Easy game. Javier Dominguez can choose to double reanimate here. Has got anything cool to, to do with that Gearhog? Nothing that will deal damage, at least not to, to win the game on the spot, I believe. Although... I think it's just best to sit nine, on that, isn't it, then? Oh. I think he had Laurent on one, actually, if he double reanimates. Okay. No, it's just better to have uh, that as an instant speed. Yeah. Even, even a Supreme Will in the graveyard, so... No odds for Laurent. Nope. He's going to pack him up. We're going to go to game number two between these two players. The Spanish superstar taking it down rather effortlessly, weathering the early storm, Simon, and ultimately the raw power of the Grixis mid-range list was able to overcome. We call this a mid-range list generally because of the presence of early creatures such as Glint Sleeve, Siphon, and Champion of Wits, both of which feature in this list as four ofs. How does that... How does this deck reposition itself post-board in the face of Goblin Chain Whirler? Uh, I think it's completely reasonable to take out uh, all your Glinsleaf Siphoners. Okay. Not only because it has one toughness, but also because it's so difficult to um, start attacking. Uh, or, to put it differently, if you can afford to start attacking, you're probably so far ahead already that you don't need the cards from the from the Siphoner. Uh, Champion of Wit's a little bit of a different story for you. Never, though. never uh, take it out. Never take no, it out. No, it's one of the best cards in your deck. Just even though the fact that it does die for free to the chain, well, by that stage, you've... You've gotten your value from the, the Faithless Looting effect, and then... It comes back, it. Yeah. exactly. It uh, has supreme synergy, also with the Scarab God, um, fills your graveyard with all kinds of things, fixes your mana effectively. Mm. Um, no, Champion of Wits is just amazing, and you don't rely on curving out, uh, so you're not forced to cast the Champion of Wits on turn three when the Chain Roller would be the most devastating. You can just play a removal on three, then see if your opponent has the Chain Roller, because if they... They would never pass the turn without a three drop mm. if they have a chain roller. They're not going to hold it just to be like, oh, I'm going to really get him with this, uh, with this I, chain roller. Because I'm really going to get the champion of wits that he might not even have in his hand. Yeah. No, that's not, that's not how, how magic works. Let's talk about the sideboarding process for those of the, both of these two blokes. I think Dominguez may be the one that our viewers are most interested in, Simon. So let's mm -hmm. have, a, have a look across this. One copy of a braid. One cast down, an Infernal Reckoning. We'll come back to that one. Sorcerer, Spyglass, Torrential, Gear Hulk. And then a bunch of two ofs as well. Chandra's Defeat, Doomfall, Tureste, Jace's Defeat, and Negate. Let's talk about this Infernal Reckoning because we've seen it. We saw it played last round where it took out a, uh, a Scrap Heap Scrounger. And this card, obviously a constructed plant for Modern in M19. 
Uh, but it can do a lot of... There are a lot of colourless creatures for it to exile uh, in, in standard as well. And, you know, the incidental life gain helps as well. Yeah, I, I thought it can only uh, take out Eldrazi, but I'm, I'm clearly wrong. No, this is, this is actually nice if you know that you will have enough sufficient targets. Even then, I think one is the maximum you can play in standard. Mm -hmm. But uh, Bombard Courier, Heart of Kirin, Scrap Heap Scrounger, all very valid targets. And actually, while the removal in standard is good, it is not super mana efficient. So having a way of dealing with a, a, with a relevant threat for one mana is, is great. One other thing, obviously a huge upside there to Infernal Reckoning is the fact that it exiles uh, rather than destroys, which means that, again, we're looking for clean answers to cards like Scrap Heap Scrounger in today's standard format. The, I mean, I, I can't remember a, a time recently, at least, where exiling cards has been so important. Mm -hmm. Perhaps in the days of Abzan Reanimator, when Dissipate was a critical piece of the puzzle there. It has been more relevant in the last years than, for example, I would say 10 years ago, yeah. because there we had more of the sticky threads that would, for example, regenerate. Mm. Uh, but we didn't have a lot of this graveyard recursion going on. Now, a constructed playable creature usually uh, enters the battlefield multiple times. Yeah. Uh, from the graveyard or, or through some uh, other abilities. Rekindling Phoenix, what have you. But, the, uh, uh, of course, all of the eternalized creatures. The other thing, of course, is Hazaret. Mm -hmm. uh, as an indestructible creature, Ronus to a lesser extent. But Hazaret as an indestructible creature has also meant that exile effects like Raska's Contempt are a premium. And that's basically the very conscious design decision to fade out, regenerate for um, these kind of recursive effects mm. and indestructibility. And indestructibility. Regenerate, I think, more a rules issue than anything else. It's just, it's just a confusing kind of uh, way to handle that. I think it's, it's about gameplay elegance, yeah. if that makes sense, more than the rules being a problem. Like, the rules are clear. Sorry, that's what I mean. It, it, it's like, from a, from a technical standpoint, there are cleaner ways mm -hmm. to, to enable the same... Uh, similar, uh, similar gameplay. Yes, yeah. effectively, yes. I remember when I first came across Regenerate, when it, back when I first started playing the game many years ago, we thought, I remember playing with Ben Layton and his Black Vampires deck, and his, we had his Regenerate creatures exit the battlefield, go to the graveyard, and then come back from there, because that's what a re mm -hmm. regeneration does, right? They die, and then they regenerate. So it made perfect sense. But uh, it was very problematic when he had entered the battlefield triggers on, uh, on you know, his, with his regeneration. Yeah, and when I started playing, there were a lot of bury effects, oh bury yeah. target creature, and mm -hmm. then you were wondering why even put regenerate on, on these creatures if everything buries to the mana anyway, yeah. and you can't regenerate. So uh, there, was, there was this, um, because that was usually the the wording, right? So it was, was destroy. It w there was destroy and, and bury. And, and bury. bury was effectively destroy. It can't be regenerated. So you were always... Um, uh, that's a blast from the past. Yeah, look at this. Terra destroying did without possibility of regeneration. Did you know that this artwork was intended to be uh, rotated by 90 degrees? That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. but once they, uh, once they put it on the card this way, yeah. defying gravity... I like it. He's like he's, uh, he's so scared he's jumping in the air. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's being pushed into the corner yes. by the by the by the sheer terror. Sheer terror. Now, jumping even higher now, but as you can see there, it's uh, it's templated with berries. I like how this is part. This is you know um, present tense as well. Berries target creature. I mean, th there we have oracle text for a reason. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. Off to the races now. Game number two between Javier Dominguez and Lauren Bailey now. Looks like a duress. There's another blast from the past. Is that a French one? Coercion? Uh, looks like it. Some of the French translations for cards are, are brilliant. You know, vindicate is justification. I mean, justification or whatever, but justification. The, the real card, Coercion, mm. actually has the same German translation yes. as the rest. Yes, Zwang and Zwang, right? And I'm just learning that the French translation for yeah. the rest is, is the also coercion, is the English which makes me wonder what, what the French name of coercion is. <laughs> Probably duress. La duress. Uh, Vrestic content being taken out. Chain roller, not very impressive in a, uh, in a matchup where your opponent doesn't rely on, on creatures primarily. No, just a 3-3 first strike. It's going to get Stonewall pretty soon by this Nickel Bolas here. And this card, I cannot stress enough how much it has shaped the standard metagame. Mm. Um, and I've said this before, not because it's overpowered, but because it's 
format defining, it's metagame warping. Now you have two kinds of decks. You have decks against which Goblin Chain Roller is super powerful, you never want to see it, and decks where Goblin Chain Roller is, like you say, three mana, three, three first strike, take one. So Bailey obviously knew that the Ravager was coming here and discards a mountain more or less straight away, but he's got an answer too, a nice clean one in the form of cut to ribbon. So Dominguez all of a sudden on the back foot facing down two very, very tidy threats here from Bailey. And he's got to face off uh, both the Chain Whirler and the Phoenix without too much in his hand. He's got this uh, Liliana. That's not, not actually, a bad yeah, sequence. Yeah, wow, that's actually pretty good. But still, is it enough? I'm not, su I'm not sure. So Bailey has to discard. Liliana still at a respectable two loyalty here. We don't often see the immediate Liliana reanimate. Usually it's Liliana upstairs, upstairs, upstairs. Is Laurent really discarding another cut to ribbons? Looks like it. That would have been the perfect answer to the Nicol Bolas there. Okay. Well, Doomfall is uh, an even better way to re remove the Nicol Bolas from the equation altogether. Mm, let Liliana live. Oh, go we, to two. Yeah, I like this. I like that's, this. That's how magic is supposed to be played. Getting very, very busy here. And as a result, Dominguez picks up his cards. We're going to game number three. Lauren Bailey, not a stumble, not a fumble. Le a lethal bourbons in the, in the graveyard, of course. Yes. And a lot of... Uh, well, look, just a, a, a textbook game there for Bailey as he leveraged uh, cheap interaction in the form of Duress and, uh, and Doomfall in, in addition to hard-hitting creatures. And Dominguez was just always on the ropes there. Mm -hmm. He never was really in the fight just because of uh, Bailey's curve out. Even if, even if Laurent's draw is, is a lot worse, that um, Nicol Bolas wouldn't even have dealt with the Phoenix on, on its own. So then if you're on the back foot uh, playing that five mana Liliana, not that great. No, the card it doesn't seem that good in this situation. I'm, I'm, I'm unsure as to why it's sort of a, an inclusion here. Maybe there just aren't enough other cards to replace it with. In in other spots, it's it's completely absurd. Mm. So if you if you return the Scarab God okay. uh, with mana up, or uh, you return a two inch Gear Hulk, that's basically game over right there. So I can totally understand the inclusion. It's just. It, it's supposed to be the finisher, not the not the turn five uh, tempo play. Okay, that's a good way to put it. Because really, I mean, the, the even though things slow down post board, even with this red black chain weather list, even though things are getting slower, more interactions coming in. There's you know these aren't these blistering fast games all the time like we saw in game two. You still, I mean, you still can be subject to early pressure as we saw, and so a five mana planeswalker that doesn't really do a whole lot to stabilize. I mean, that was a, a very good case, if not best case scenario, for Liliana coming down, reanimating a 4-4, a free uh, Raven's Crime there as well. And, yeah, and Bailey and still played through Also it. the second discard of the game, so yeah. so really adding up there the value. But Laurent is on the, is on the draw for game three. Okay. I think that's actually... It's not hugely relevant in standard right now, but in this matchup uh, it definitely um, makes a big difference. Well, let's see what the uh, opening hands of these two players can uh, get going for them here. Dominguez, has, of course, had a, had a pretty good year. Top four, uh, top two world's appearance. That's a, a while back, right? That's almost a year ago. Almost a year ago. And since then, he's, he's done well. He's been, uh, he's been around. He's been out and about. Oh, I mean, you um, you see the nine nine there, mm -hmm. the number nine next to his name. That's his uh, pro player standing. Ninth ranked player in the world. So, players consulting their opening grips. Let's see what the doctor has brought this time around. Dominguez with that classic one card at a time pickup that he's known for. You ever seen this man draft? Um, yes. Ooh. Tell you what, I he, think he likes to get up close and personal with those packs. I think we've had to uh, record that uh, one yeah. or two times. Yeah. Here's Boma Curia getting frisky on turn number one. Dominguez down to 19. Card already in that post bag. See if he's got any answer for it on turn number two. But yes, I remember a recent draft when uh, our good friend Matei Zadelkai was having to record the draft of Dominguez. And my goodness me, he made it hard. He made it p hard for poor old uh, Large Z there. Across comes the Curia once again.
Seems like Large Z is uh, watching along today. Salutations. It's great to have you along, Matei, wherever you are. I imagine at home enjoying a, uh, a weekend to yourself, perhaps, with the, uh, the wife and the, and the young child, small Z. Lowercase Z. Lowercase Z, yes. Three matter now for Bailey. Let's see what he's uh, cooking with. It is a goblin chain whirler. And Dominguez doesn't have anything to say about that. He's going to take another one point of damage. His hand is pretty well set up to go into the late game, as long as he keeps hitting these land drops. Would have been really nice to see the Infernal Reckoning against this uh, start. Had to deal with uh, Bomet Curry and Scarpip Scrounger the traditional way. Interesting spot here because Javier can uh, spend his premium removal spell, Rest is Contempt, actually the, the last removal spell in his hand, mm. on the Chain Roller um, to buffer his life total the, the best way, which clearly would make the Argyle's Blood Fast stronger. But instead he's deciding to take uh, what is effectively five, three from the Chain Roller and two from the activation that I expect to, to oh, happen. He's got to activate it. But... That means he's keeping the one removal spell for the cards he really cares about. Mm -hmm. um, Chandra, Hazard, and Rikilin Phoenix. See Agul there, searching for the uh, the Bat God. Yeah, weird dude. Re Rikilin Phoenix. Don't know what's up with him. Yeah, he was not a happy chappy when he finally returned to uh, Fort Odanto. Doesn't look very healthy. No, well, he was, uh, he was obviously... He was on a cut. Troubled. Yeah, he, he was on a cut. He was trying to, you know... Oh, was, was it like low, low carb? Yeah, very very low carb, Simon. Even for a vampire, very low carb diet. Trying to get get shredded for the you know for the summer for the music festivals. Go to stereo, bro, and just pound it out in the pit. Oh my god, get it done. Better dead than bread, bro. You know what I'm saying? Here's another another goblin chain wheeler. If you were a fish, Simon, fishing shows around the world would be able to generate zero content for you being in any kind of waterway because you just never, ever take the bait. <laughs> I've no, nobody has ever started a sentence with, if you were a fish. No, because I think it's, broadly, it's broadly known, in, in magic terms at least, that you are a bit of a fish. Oh, that's... <laughs> that was uncalled for. Here's a Vraska's Contempt now. Take care of the uh, old 3-3 first striker. Just, just wait for my triumphant return to competitive magic next weekend. Oh, yes, at German Nationals? I've never done oh. well at German Nationals, ever. Oh, well, I, I tell you what, I hope you turn that around. Yeah, that's it, mate. Raf Levy with the next level uh, card viewer game here. He knows what's up. Oh, Simon, if you make the German National team, and I'm working at the World Magic Cup, you're going to have so much oh, fun. I'm going to have so much fun. I'm going to have so much fun. Matei is going to go out, get out of retirement. Yeah, just to come back. And, oh, there will be that many daggers. Dominguez now with the champion of wits. Draw two, discard two. Th thankfully, the chances are quite low. So, Interesting spot always. Uh, you have that sixth land in your hand, but you kind of want all the cards. Takes a bit of restraint. So... Content to continue to hit those land drops, of course, with a Torrential Gearhulk in hand. Looks to be in a good position. And even with this Scrap Heap Scrounger coming back, Dominguez has still done a good job of, of containing this board state. This is actually what uh, we were talking about earlier. The Champion of Wits being timed in such a way that the mm. Goblin Chain yeah. triggers actually not mattering uh, to, a, to a huge extent. Well, no. actually not, not being uh, on the battlefield at the same time. And more or less costing a card there with that cut to ribbons, removing the 2-1 just so that Scrap Heap Scrounger can get through. Although it does continue to pressure Dominguez's life total, a very relevant thing considering he has an Argyle's blood fast out there. Well, also because you are almost threatening lethal, right? Um, that f cut was used for 3 damage effectively mm -hmm. on uh, Javier. The ribbons are already representing... Another 4. If there is a black source, because oh, that yeah, it doesn't have any energy. That ether hub is not powered up. It needs to slam a a monster here. It's just all out of energy. Here's a torrential gear hulk now. Looks like it's going to be Vraska's contempt to remove the scrap heap mm. scrounger once and for all. The double ambush. 
but an unlicensed disintegration in response. A nice one there to continue to pressure Javier Dominguez's life total. So he goes to seven, or to eight, excuse me. Loses, uh, loses three, gains two. He can't, he can't activate the blood fast because then he, he's just um, dead to ribbons, but I think he has a supreme will. So mm -hmm. uh, now if Laurent actually fires off the, the ribbons, Javier gets to counter it, and he's doing quite well then. But in this case, I don't understand why he's not drawing in a few extra cards. That would, that would seem like the logical uh, conclusion to what I just described. Yeah, it might start to ring some alarm bells for Bailey here, as we see now a Bowmate Courier immune to the Chandra's defeat in hand. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite know. I think Javier should have probably drawn one card, hoping that Lord then just goes for the ribbons and... Uh, he can pull further ahead because now he's doing it um, in a turn where he would rather have the mana available to him. Dragon Skull Summit off the top. Supreme Will still in hand here for Dominguez, as we saw. And we're going to... Oh, Dominguez going to flip the uh, uh, the Argos Bloodfast into the Temple of... <coughs> now we're talking. And start sacrificing his creatures for fun and profit. Where's where the Temple gone? Oh, there it is. Sorry, Bailey was having a read of it. Probably trying to understand exactly how much it's worth in a game of Scrabble. High scoring uh, magic card in... In English Scrabble, at least. Probably. Zed's only worth four points in German Scrabble. Oh, and don't get me started about Slovakian. Oh, yeah. It's probably worth one, right? The vowels are the ones that are worth a, a lot in, uh, in Slovakian Scrabble. What's the highest scoring German Scrabble letter? Probably Y, right? I have no idea. Probably Y. But Y is a good guess. Yeah. Upsilon. Aklazoth. Akzots? Aklazots. 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 Legendary land. Very gruesome card. Yes, indeed. Look at that. Both the, both sides are really... Not, my, not my jam. He, no, really. This jam on the, <laughs> on the temple <laughs> the floor. Jam is like, not the, my jam. The jam is all over the place here. The human jam. And yes, uh, Argul was a, a thirsty chap once, uh, as I say, once he got back to, uh, after his, after finding the, the Temple of the Bat God. He was a thirsty fellow once he got back to uh, Adanto, the first fort, and uh, took out his, his hunger, or his thirst, I guess. Do vampires get hungry or thirsty? Uh, it's thirst. It's thirst. Yes. Okay. As you might know from every vampire magic card ever printed. Yeah. Now uh, that you think about it. Yeah, there's ne they're never... No, Vona's hunger. <laughs> the one, the one exce exception. Very good. Don't Very even good. worry about it. Goblin Chain Whirler Part Troys, I believe. I think this is the third one that's been played so far. She is on three. She just wanted a sandwich. Yeah, yeah. It's not like they only consume blood. Yeah, she just wanted a chicken roll. I think they do only consume blood. It depends, man. There's so many different flavors of vampires these days. Too many tropes. Too many. Stay on top of. Is that a vampire? No. Judges? Does, no. No, we're getting the thumbs down. Oh, a dissenting opinion from Ralph Levy. It is a vampire. Apparently it depicts the, uh, the, uh, it depicts the fellow Krovax, who is a vampire. Well, that, this debate will rage on, Simon. Yeah. Somewhere else. Hopefully. Somewhere else, yes. Right now, Dominguez having to find a way to uh, contest this uh, rather precarious position he's put himself in as we see Chandra's defeat on the Goblin Chain Whirler. Red Black Chain Whirler is out grinding the most two for one -y deck yes. in the format. Yes. yes. That's exactly what we're seeing. Yes. Red Black Chain Whirler. And now, to be Javier is on three. He doesn't have creatures to sacrifice to the Bad God. He's dying to a Bowmite Courier, to the card advantage of Bowmite Courier. And if he ever taps out, Ribbons is going to take him out. I, in fact, he's so low that <laughs> Ribbons will kill him Even through, through a, a Supreme, Supreme Will. Rough stuff for the Spanish uh, superstar here. And we, are, we might be looking at um, elimination from top eight contention. Oh, with, uh, with the third loss. Yes, indeed. That's well and truly on the cards here. It's, it's never certain uh, until, it's, until it's certain, but I would say that uh, Javier is most likely not making the top eight. 
the if most he, if he loses here. meekly eternalized champion of wits I've ever seen. Four cards off the top. One, two, three, and four. There's a cast down amongst them and a braid. Liliana, Death's Majesty. And a land. Oh, I like it, Laurent. Like, let me check my graveyard. Oh, what's this? Mm, look what I found. Oh, cut to ribbons. Are you done? Seems very, <laughs> seems very good. <laughs> but we do have the temple, right? The, uh, yes. So the to life total is seven? Effectively. Yes, and there's no mana cost involved with that, although it does shut off the uh, Supreme Will. As Dominguez didn't find an untapped land, he discards both the braids. And that could be huge, right? Up to seven. If... So, oh, uh, so how, much, how much does Laurent have to... Um, ribbons for? He can blast for seven right now, or ribbons for seven. For six would be... For six would be already be enough. Because, because the then, career. then the career gets yep. through. And there is probably some weird line where you... Well, probably the best line is just to not, not ribbons at this point in this turn. Well, if he casts ribbons right now, it can, of course, just uh, get supreme willed. Not happy about that verb there, but that's the way that it goes. Glory bringer put on the stack. Supreme will proof. Is that going to be enough to close this one out? Not against the temple, I believe, no. right? Okay. So it'll effectively mean that Dominguez's life total remains unchained. Unchanged. Oh, and a cast down as well. Yes, as we saw, drawn off of that uh, Champion of Wits. That's good stuff. And Javier is effectively on... Oh, no, he has the Temple. He's got still the Temple, okay. so now he's so on seven. So actually that was the perfect use of his mana. Yes. Now Laurent can attack for uh, Ancestral Recalling. Mm. And that's what we're going to see here. Another card put underneath. Block. And in instead of it dying mm -hmm. to combat damage, it will be sacrificed. And Bailey draws three new cards. And once again, we see how this, uh, the, the red-black chain will attack very, very short on burn spells. Here's a scrap heap scrounge now. Another lethal threat. But Dominguez is going to gain his life. He wants to keep that, ac that Temple of Aklazots active for next turn as well. He should... Is, is this the... Have we seen a second champion of wits? His graveyard's a bit of a mess. I don't think so. I don't think so. There was two last game. Maybe but he has, a, he has a, a Liliana. So that, that's actually super impressive. Back he, up to nine. He, well, that's, a f that's enough. He can just get the... Oh, sure. Just bring it, yeah, that's even better. I was going to say he could make a zombie and then sacrifice that. But yeah, this is a lot better. So check this out. Check this out. Bring back a Tarantula Gear Hulk. Exile your dude. Go up to nine. And then he's got six life waiting for him on a stick here. B beautiful. Beautiful lines by Javier Dominguez. Wonderful lines. Really, really, like, it, w it came down to a single mana, a single point of damage, but Javier had everything under control. Even the top deck Glorybringer um, dealt with for two mana so that he could still activate the temple. And now oh. it, it might be all over, Red Rover. Look at these lines. These are more beautiful lines than the waiting room of an understaffed modeling agency, Simon. Incredible stuff from Dominguez. Continue to apply an enormous amount of pressure, locking up the battlefield, and still has that Temple of Aklazots ready to go. And you know what did it? The Champion of Wits. Draw four, discard yep. two. It got him the exact cards that he needed. Draw four, discard two, gain four, threaten to block your career, career uh, have Supreme Will up, and, and uh, everything just, just came up. Dominguez climbing and climbing out of range of that ribbons in the bin. He's, I think he's still holding on to that supreme will, right? Mm -hmm. Still, he, he never, he never, uh, he never let go of that because he knew that the that the ribbons were the one card he had to he had to beat this game. That the main card he had to beat this game. Six, seven mana now. We're going to see a, uh, a yes. Look at this. Wakes up the nickel bolus or attempts to in any case, but no. Instead, it's going to die to an unlicensed disintegration. Not before I get the chance to kill it, says Dominguez. You can't quit. You're fired. And so Dominguez up to 19. He was on three two turns ago, Simon. I, I tip my hat. This game was exceptionally well played. Beautiful stuff from Dominguez as we see him reanimate Nickel Bolas for a, another time here. That's another cut to... No, sorry. Insult to injury in the bin this time for Bailey. Yeah, bit surprised to see that. And here is Nicol Bolas, the Arisen. The first time I think we've seen it on the battlefield uh, 
in stand at this tournament at least, and that is a huge play, and Dominguez still has all these as he shows off that supreme will very proudly indeed. An incredible victory from uh, Javier Dominguez coming out of nowhere to win that one, and uh, that more or less puts Bailey out of contention for top eight. Dominguez clutching onto the cliff edge with those fingernails there, hoping to, uh, as you see, snakily zig and zag his way into that top eight. As we bring it back to the booth, ladies and gentlemen, I have to say hearty congratulations there to Dominguez after a masterful display of uh, a, a very deft and precise manoeuvrability with a list that at, at one point we thought just did not have what it took. And not just technical play, but also foresight. Mm. Uh, knowing that somehow the ribbons would be the key card to play around, but that uh, the Supreme Will alone was definitely not enough to beat it. Mm. So somehow manoeuvring his own life total so that the... Um, Bloodfest would flip and then just in time deliver the, the life points needed. Ultimately, Dominguez, a masterclass from him, as you would expect from the Spaniard there, well and truly, uh, well, doing exactly what, we, what, he'd expect of, uh, what we'd expect of him. My friends, we're going to take a break. We're going to be back on the other side of this with more magic coming your way. Time Walk after these ads. We'll be back from Brussels after this. Play Standard each week to win special Standard Showdown prize boosters. Corset 2019 Standard Showdown events are being held near you. Find a location to play at magic.wizards.com slash standard showdown. Looking for a place to hang out and play Magic? Head to your local game store this and every Friday to play Friday Night Magic events. Get more info at magic.wizards.com slash FNM.
Welcome back to the tournament floor here at GP Brussels. You're in the booth with me, Riley, and him, Simon. And Simon, we've already covered off this off air, but it is time to uh, reveal to the viewers now, we have a Time Walk Magic with two of the biggest names in Magic. That's right, Niels Gutierrez, Von Porat, and Panagiotis Papadopoulos. There aren't many players in the room with more letters in their name, Simon. Mm -hmm. And our coverage template has it covered. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Virtuous Gearhawk off the top now to this Merfolk Branch Walker. What is going on with Gutierrez von Porat's list? Look at this. It's a Saltai God Pharaoh's gift deck at 10, 1, and 1. He is ready to snap the format across his knee like Bane and Batman. Panagiotis Papadopoulos, better safe than sorry. He's on red, black, chain weller. I was talking to Thomas van der Pelt earlier, and mm -hmm. uh, he admitted that Blue-White Godfarer's Gift was maybe not the best choice for this tournament. Uh, of course, he had been playing it very successfully last weekend. Now, we will have to see whether playing Sultai Gift has a real, um, real benefit here. That plus one plus one corner just turned into a minus one minus one corner, Riley. Oh, wow. Yeah, just helping you out there. Deft, deft play there from Von Porat. As uh, we see the Goblin Chain Wheeler come down. And thanks to Solskar Mage, yes. Well, Simon, I need all the help I can get. I certainly uh, certainly make no bones of that fact. And the 1-2-3 curve out from Papadopoulos as well. Uh, the actually, probably, for me at least, the first time I've seen the Solskar Mage uh, Goblin Chain Wheeler interaction this weekend. So, Von Porat... Merfolk Branchwalker, a nice one to reanimate with a God Pharaoh's Gift. Finds you the cards you need. A hostage Taker I see in hand as well. What other spicy meatballs can be brought back from the grave? Yeah, I mean, all of the cards are really good when, when they um, get back from the graveyards with their Enter the Battlefield triggers and when they are 4 force. Now, this is, of course, a deck that doesn't have access to Refurbish, so Sultai Gift is still relying on uh, Gate to the Afterlife to mm -hmm. get those uh, God Pharaoh's gift into play. There's no refurbish action because of the uh, colours involved in the Sultai uh, gift list. But this is not a deck that we've seen very often and uh, certainly has got some pretty sweet stuff that it can do. Not only Glintness Crane coming back as a 4-4, of course, and gaining you... Well, how often is it actually hitting? Not very. No, not very. Not very. There's Gate to the Afterlife, God Pharaoh's Gift, Walking Ballista, Virtuous Gear Hulk. That's Virtuous it. Gear Hulk and Walking Ballista are like the, the bonus hits. Yeah. But that doesn't make the card amazing. Hey, it doesn't need to be. Paul Avita Dama Rosa will put this in his Pro Tour deck no matter what. He would play this card with zero artifacts. One through flying. For two. A bargain. A bargain at twice the price. Goblin Chain Wheeler coming in with the Scrap Heap Scrounger now. And Von Porat looks like he's going to line up a triple block here. What's the line for Von Porat? Well, either you just live, like to live on the uh, risky side of things, yeah. or you really want your graveyard to be full of creatures. I guess both of those things are, uh, you know, the, the, the fail case there isn't too bad in a deck with God Pharaoh's gift. You see there the gift in hand for Porat. He does want to put it on the table, however. No easy way to do that just, uh, just yet. The gift or the gate? The gift for the seven mana? I think it's the version. gate. Oh, okay, the gate. I think it's the gate. Nice one here, preventing all the damage as Thrashy B jumps in the fr in uh, in front of uh, of Whirly Dubs there. Yeah, that's a more elegant block than the than the triple Hail Mary. Yeah, hoping they don't have anything. And Papadopoulos continues his curve out with Pia Nala. Von Porat finds an island. Okay, only two mana away from Godfarer's Gift Hardcrust. Vudrisky Hulk in hand for Von Porat, as indeed is a uh, hostage taker. So he can definitely bolster his battlefield this time around. I like the host I like the uh, the Virtuous Gear Hulk here. Oh, me too. Absolutely. Beef up that glint nest crane. Beef up everything. Comes a nice blocker there. Actually, the crane is already quite a good blocker for the Thopter token. Okay. Um, having a 4-4 four -four is great against the Chain Whirler. Mm -hmm. Then the real question is how big can you make the Branch Walker? Von Porat may be ma taking a different line here. It's going to be Soul Scar Mage and then immediately cast it. It's a bit of a shake in the hands of Von Porat. He may be feeling the pressure. We are heading towards further and further towards the cut to top eight. 
And of course, in those dazzling lights in the feature match area, it's a difficult, uh, difficult place to keep your composure, Simon. Yep, and uh, this turn is is the first that I that I really disagree with. I think Virtuous Gehog is just too powerful of a uh, of a card. Just looking at the at the board impact, Hostage Shaker on a Salt Scar Mage. I'm not uh, thrilled about that. Not in love with it. No. Well, Von Porat chooses to trade off his Merfolk Branchwalker there. Papadopoulos chucking Pia Nala in front for two one. And now. Hazard the Fervent. Papadopoulos is, uh, uh, well, how far away from attacking with it? Is it just one card in hand now? Yeah. Nice. Uh, he was about one second away from attacking. Goblin Chain World is going to make the trip across along with the 5 4 here. Yep. And uh, Niels has never found a, a good block for the, for the 3 3 4 strike. Rough stuff, man. 5 4 indestructible, 4 5 indestructible, 5 4 indestructible haste creature. His board, his board would have been so much better uh, with the with the Gear Hulk. Sure, there would have been a Soul Scar Mage on the opposing side, but who cares? Now, just having to hemorrhage away these creatures. And I Von Porat keeping the, the Soul Scar Mage mm -hmm. around. And do why you is know, that? Do you know why? Uh, because the Hostage Taker is better in the bin because of uh, Godfrey's Gift? Yes. Oh, I'm so good at this game. I'm so good at this game. Sometimes you have to chomp log with your best creature if you really want it uh, in the graveyard. I think I'm more of the broken clock that is right twice a day, <laughs> to be honest. Virtuous Gearhawk now for Von Porat. Mm -hmm. Now we do get some high toughness creatures. I would like to see a six toughness creature here. So let's see where these dice end up being uh, distributed. Looks like we're going to see a 5-5 five five Gear Hulk. Mm -hmm. And th that's nice. I mean, the 5-5 five five or 4-4 four four doesn't make that big of a difference. But having having the 4-6 Glint Nest Crane means that it is a blocker for um, for Hazard. Big old bird. Been hitting the gym. We'll see it on uh, the subreddit Birds with Arms next. No, we won't. We'll see it in the graveyard of Von Porat after that unlicensed disintegration. No license required to get rid of that bird. And, uh, well, the beatings continue because morale has just not improved. His carries ever as well for Papadopoulos, who's really turning the screws on Von Porat. Virtuous Gearhulk number two. Jeez, can he survive this turn? Making two massive dudes here. But can Papadopoulos just chuck through enough damage? Uh, no. Block Hazard, block Chain Whirler, take four, five. I think this is lethal. Yeah. With an abrade, with it, it with certainly abrade is. It's certain, but even without, it would have been uh, effectively lethal for... Now, my friends, we are uh, running uh, a bit short of time on this round, round 13 here. So as a result, we are going to skip game number two, head to straight to game number three, as you can see there. Von Porat breaking the uh, the breaking serve? I don't know. In any case, one and one for Papadopoulos and Von Porat in game number three. And the perfect start here for Von Porat with a Lanawar Elves. Did he put himself on the draw there? No, just didn't have it. Didn't have it on land. Okay. Did have another land, so must have put himself on the draw. This is... I was game number three, excuse me. Three. I'm, 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 a, I'm a, a baboon with a microphone. Excuse me. Merfolk Bra Branch Walker trading off with the Scrap Heap Scrounger. And now, Minister of Inquiries. I like how I explained how we were going to game number three <laughs> after Von Porat won, and then wondered why he was going second. I really like how that sort of commentary window came together. Two halves of a perfect hole. Painting, a, hole, painting a, uh, a clear picture. Yes, paint a perfect picture in. there. The hole being what I buried myself in with my insane ramblings. Let's move on now and see this abrade taking care of the gate to the afterlife. Minister of Inquiries tearing up books. Some Maybe. some highlights there in the graveyard. Yeah, as look well. at that. I was going to say. Uh, what is that? Uh, confiscation crew. Confiscation crew. Ethersphere harvester. So here is Virgil's gear hop. Looks like it's coming down on turn four as well. A nice one here for Von Porat to bolster up that board. And Niels is playing this kind of like a 
a two-dimensional deck that has the, the Godfarer's Gift combo approach, but can also just uh, go aggressive and win the race with uh, mm. Virtuous Gearhawk. Yeah, sometimes Gearhawks are just good enough. Oh, Gearhawks are very often uh, good enough, yeah. So, Papadopoulos trading his uh, Scrappy Scrounger and a cut to ribbons to remove that Virtuous Gearhawk. A bit but of an unfortunate draw uh, for on the Chain Water side. Yeah. Yeah, all these, uh, all these creatures are nowhere to go. And now... It looks like Papadopoulos doesn't have what it takes. Nils Gutierrez von Poret continues his conquest of GP Brussels. 11-1-1. One, and one. Well and truly in, in the conversation for uh, the top eight here, yep. Simon. Maybe the only Sultai uh, gift player still in contention. For Maybe the eight. only Sultai gift player ever to have made a top eight with a GP, uh, with, uh, at a GP. Be very interesting to say. I, I haven't seen that deck, at least not at the top tables. No. Uh, I mean, I, think I, I don't think I've seen it full stop. It's a it's a, a real spicy brew. I'm sure the list will be across the internet before very much longer, my friends, so keep an eye out for that. In any case, we're going to go to a break. Round number 14 coming your way after this. You'll be back in the booth with Tim and Raph. So stick around. We'll be back from Brussels in just a few moments.